By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a pretty interesting wizard's duel for you because we're going to look at an army of prodigal sorcerers, an army of Timmy's taking on an army of trolls. So this is, um, yeah, this is quite the duel. I'm looking forward to show it to you. It is played in an um, unlimited 40 format, which is something we haven't done a lot on this channel. I haven't show, shown you that much of this format. Actually, there's only one other video showing the unlimited 40 format. Now, um, if you wanna know more about this format, please check the description below because there I have some rules and also a link to their Discord community. I know they're on tournaments, you can join the Discord for free. So if this is something you think, hey, I kind of like it, you know, it's an interesting format, you can join the Discord and ask around about, you know, how to play it, what kind of decks to make, etc., etc. But here, of course, I am interested in the gameplay. So I'm really looking forward to the actual match. But before we do that, as always, I have a little deck deck. So I'm first going to look at the troll army that's being played by, I believe, Mr. Munich. So I'm going to have a look at that first. And then I'm going to discuss, of course, the Particle Sorcerer deck. So I'm also looking forward to that. Uh, before I do that, uh, please um, remember that you can also skip this section if you want to by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click, click on there, you go straight to the action. Okay, now that's out of the way. I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the trolls. Let's take a look. And here we see the first deck by Mr. Munich. So this is Disco Troll, right? But then in an unlimited 40 jacket. So what does Disco Troll want to do? Well, you've got your Nevenerl disc, right? Forte cast comes into play tapped. You can pay one, sacrifice the disc, and it destroys basically everything. Well, um, if you combine this with regeneration creatures, you can, of course, regenerate your creatures. In this uh, case, the trolls. You can regenerate your trolls. They stay alive. Everything of your opponent is wiped out, and then you can attack. Now, remember, this is a format where you cannot play with the expansions, so that means there is no Mishra's Factory to kind of have to having to deal with because that's usually one of those creatures that's quite tough to kill with the Nevenerals disc because the Nevenerals disc doesn't destroy the lands, right? So that's kind of the main strategy of the deck. Then of course we also have a lot of direct damage because you're playing with red anyway. So we see two fireballs, a disintegrate, three lightning bolts. So pretty aggressive from that department as well. If the game goes long, he can always finish it off with one of his disintegrates or fireballs. Then there's also a little sneaky blue splash there in the left bottom corner for that one ancestral recall. Uh, we also see three Hypnotic Spectres. I kind of like this. You may think, you know, the Hypnotic Spectre, why are they in the deck? Because you cannot regenerate the Spectre, so it's going to die from your own Nevenerals disc. That's all true, but if you can get an early Hypnotic Spectre, you're kind of forcing your opponent to deal with it, because if you don't deal with the Spectre, things can get out of hand very quickly. So that's why the card is so strong. And then we also see a sideboard. You may be wondering, why is it such a small sideboard? Well, that's part of the unlimited 40 rules that you have a five card sideboard. So that's quite interesting. So not 15, only five. We see um, another disintegrate. We see an earthquake, of course, a red elemental blast that works great against those blue decks that he's actually playing against today. Uh, then we see a flash fire and we also see a beautiful earthbind. So earthbind, one to cast for an enchant creature that you can put on a creature with flying. Then it deals two damage to that creature and that creature loses flying. Uh, definitely. So the two damage is, of course, only for that turn. So then the creature dies or not. It's great to combine this with, for example, your uh, lightning bolt, because then you can put it on, let's say, a Sarah Angel. Sarah Angel is going to lose the flying, but also gets two damage, and then you can kill it with your lightning bolt. So that's um, that's pretty sweet. And of course, Earthbind is a fantastic card to kill those Hypnotic Spectres, but they're they're on the side of Mr. Munich, so he's not going to kill his own stuff, of course. But I, I like this card in the sideboard. It's always nice to see uh, this card. It wasn't reprinted after Revised, I believe. So it's, it's always nice to see the card. Anyway, this is the deck of Mr. Munich. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the Wizards deck piloted by Theodore. And uh, man, it is so cool. This um, is a, a, a recording of the finals, by the way. It's played in the finals of the Unlimited 40. So kind of to give you an idea of their power level. So we see the, uh, the Timmy's here. I believe there are like eight or nine Tims in his deck. Then he's also playing with three counter spells, three side blasts. Maybe you're wondering why you're seeing so many threes. That's because I think of the uncommons, you can only play three instead of four. So that's why you don't see four bolts, but only three bolts. And you may be wondering, but bolt, isn't it common? Yes, but they 
probably upgraded it in the rule set to uncommon because it's so good. You don't want to play against endless decks of, uh, you know, 20 bolts or 40 bolts or whatever. You know, you, you want to have a little bit of interaction in your game. So that's probably why they made it an uncommon. Uh, again, if you want to know more about the rules, all the ins and outs, please check the description below for more information on that department. Um, then we also see one IC Manipulator, one Control Magic, which is probably pretty good in this format because there, you know, there are two main cards to get rid of enchantments, I would say, and that is Disenchant and Tranquility, where Disenchant obviously is the best way. So if you're playing against uh, a deck that doesn't have white to its disposal, Control Magic already gets a lot better. But of course, in this case, he's playing against red and they do have red Elemental Blast. So there is an answer there. It's only a one-off though. Um, when we look at the rest of the deck, we see the mighty Mahamoti Jin for the late game. We also see Glasses of Urza. It's pretty cool to see that card. You don't see it often. I think it's I'm going to say it again. I say it about so many cards, but I think it's underestimated. I've tried to actually find a place for it in my deck, Timmy Spellbook, because it's so handy with counter magic. Um, anyway, I think what he wants to do, it's pretty obvious, right? He just wants to play out a lot of Timps and ping his opponent to death. I like it, Theodore. I like it. Um, looking at the sideboard, we see a Steel Artifact, which could be useful against all the Neveneral's discs. So I'm going to look forward to, uh, to see that. Maybe we're going to see that in action. Uh, we also see a blue Elemental Blast that's definitely going to come in from the sideboard. And I think the other sideboard cards are not very relevant in this particular matchup. Okay, we've looked at the deck of Theodore the Wizards and we've looked at the troll deck of Mr. Munich. That means we're ready. Let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. Theodore, a.k.a. Chris, sitting on the right there, starting with his Wizards deck. This is a good start for him with the Soul Ring. Playing against Jeff, a.k.a. Mr. Munich, with his troll army. And, ooh, he also has a pretty good start there. Mox Jet and a Mountain into a Shatter there. Ooh, this is great stuff here by Mr. Munich, taking care of that Soul Ring. Remember, with that Soul Ring, Chris would have been able to now play a, uh, a Wizard, one of his Protocol Sorcerers. He is playing with eight or nine of those in his deck. Second blue pass turn. That means he has now access to counter magic. Remember, these are only 40 card decks. So if you've got three counter spells, there's a pretty good chance that you have one in hand. And that's probably why Theodore is a little bit in the tank here. If he can find, for example, a black mana, he could potentially play out. Um, he could play out his Hypnotic Spectre. He could also play out a Setch Troll. Of course, there's an Underground Sea tapping all three. There we see an Often Troll. Oi, oi, oi. So a 2-2, two, two, and you can regenerate it for one red. Are we going to see a counter spell from Chris? Chris is also playing with Psy Blasts, of course, so he could blast it away next turn. I'm pretty sure if you are uh, Chris, you want to do this quite quickly because you don't want to give Jeff the opportunity to untap and have access to his counter mana. Uh, sorry, to his uh, regeneration mana. There we see a counter spell here from Chris. Taking care of business. I mean, I think if you're Jeff, it's okay that he uses a counterspell on this. It's not too bad. There we see Chris tapping three. There is the Tim. So the first Tim has landed. I'm pretty sure that Jeff will board in his Earthquakes, by the way, after game number one. And there is a Badlands tapping three. And now he has that Badlands, so he has access to regeneration. So this is a really good move here by Jeff and this is already a little bit of a problem here for Chris so that uh, set troll is a 3-3 because of that Badlands and remember he can regenerate it for one black there's another island probably we're gonna see oh not another Tim are we gonna see a control magic no we're gonna see an icy manipulator that is pretty good the problem of course for Chris is that he cannot use it straight away but if it can stick you know, it's it's a pretty good solution to the troll. Now, of course, Chris has stepped out again, so Jeff can kind of do his thing. I'm expecting him to play another troll. A hippie would be quite good as well. There's the attack with the 3-3. Three, three. Probably Chris is just going to take this hit, going to drop to 17. Exactly. And then Jeff playing another swamp, tapping 4. Interesting. What does he have that costs 4? Ooh, of course, a Nevenrose disc. So there's the disc, and the disc is actually quite good, right? He can pop the disc, destroy the Icy Manipulator, and of course the Protocol Sorcerer. 
and he can regenerate his own off control. So that's really, really good. And uh, it's not looking good for Chris. He is playing one steel artifact in his sideboard. So after game one, he could port that in. So Chris has got five mana now. What is he going to do? He did ping Jeff, by the way, so he's now on 19. I mean, if you don't really have a solution for the Nevernose disc, I would probably leave the board as is. You know, you can use your Icy to tap the troll, exactly. And then you just have to accept that you're probably going to lose two cards here. There's not much you can do about it at this point, so he's going to tap down the Satch. So Satch is being tapped. I mean, if you're Jeff, do you really want to use the disc already? I think maybe you want to use it end step. Again, it depends what you have in hand. Because if you, if you detonate your disc now, which is not a bad thing, of course, then you give yourself a, uh, a second main phase to kind of play out your cards. So if he uses the disc, I'm pretty sure he's got something to play out after that. So he's using the disc. He's regenerating his sedge. Obviously, Chris is pinging in response. So Jeff is going to drop to 18. The Setch is going to stay because of the Regeneration Shield. There we see another land by Jeff probably. And I'm expecting another creature here. Maybe another Setch, another Often Troll. Ooh, an Hypnotic Spectre. That's actually pretty good. Are we going to see a counter spell from Chris here? I mean, this is an important moment in the game. If Chris cannot get rid of this Hippie, he's in serious trouble. Does he have, yeah, he's got a bolt. Playing with three bolts, of course, as well. So taking care of the Hypnotic Specter. Bolting it, and there's a the pass. So are we gonna see another Tim? Yes, yes, I think we do. There's another Timmy. It is. In a way, it's a bit unfortunate for Chris that he's playing against the Trolls because, of course, they have regeneration. And also, they're, they're not one toughness, they're two toughness, or in set Trolls, usually three toughness. So it's a bit harder to deal with. Um, it is nice to have those Tims, of course, against the, uh, the Hypnotic Specters because they don't have regeneration. But it's not ideal. I can imagine for Chris, he's probably had some matchups that were just great to play with the Wizards. Like, for example, Savannah Lines is a great target for, uh, for the Protocol Sorcerer. Also, green players usually are playing with Elvish Archers and Lanawar Elves and Birds of Paradise. They're great targets for the Tim. We see another Taiga being dropped here by Chris, who's playing, I believe, only one green card, the Regrowth. There is an Ancestral Recall by Jeff, so the only blue card in his deck. And I guess if you're playing a format with only 40 cards, Ancestral Recoil gets even better because you're simply playing with less cards, so there's more of a chance that you find it in your deck. There is a Counterspell, though, by Chris. This is a good move. Counter that Ancestral Recoil. That is so important here. Two cards in hand, I believe, for Jeff. He's going to swing in again, of course, with the Setch. Chris going to drop to 11. And there's a ping and a pass, probably. So it's a pretty entertaining game so far. Jeff has kind of been the aggressor the whole time. Only one card in hand, it looks like, for Chris. That's not a lot. And he still has that Setch problem. This is the thing with these regeneration creatures. It's just, it's so tough to deal with, especially if you're not playing with white, because then you don't have access to Swords to Plowshares. So he's going to drop here to eight oof jeff is still on 17 only took a couple of pings from some wizards there we see a hypnotic specter hitting the board only one card in hand for chris here this is not looking good remember it's just game number one again a ping of course from chris so we see jeff dropping to 16 chris on eight drawing a card for turn two cards in hand Control magic would be really nice right now. He 
He's looking at his hand, trying to decide what to do. I mean, he could play another Tim, but that's not really going to help him. It's, it's better than nothing, I guess. Ooh, this is interesting. What is he playing? I can't... Oh, there's a glass of Urza. That's it. Using the glasses to kind of have a look at Jeff's hand. Oh, ho, ho, he's toast. Two direct damage cards, a fireball and a bolt. He's on eight. Wow. Sometimes you don't want to see your opponent's hand. You're like, I don't want to see this stuff, man. And Jeff is probably going to fire away his bolt, perhaps. Putting Chris on five here. He could, of course, also decide to go for the Tim. I'm expecting him to go for the life total, though. Oh, he's going for the Tim. Okay, wow, that's interesting. That means, I mean, that means he cannot chum block his Sedge, I guess. And he can deal three damage with the Sedge. So you kind of have the same result. I mean, he can swing in here for five, put him on three. Then he's kind of missing one land to finish it off. If he has a land in hand. What is he going to do? Yep, there's the land. Now he can finish it off. There is the fireball. And I think if you're Chris, you already knew the moment you used that glass of Ursa. You're like, uh-oh, two direct damage cards. That's no good if I'm on eight. Anyway, this was game number one. Both players are going to go into their five-card sideboards. And we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for the Trolls player, and there's the Wizards player on the play. Then, of course, Chris starting with a Volcanic Island and a pass turn to our 3D-shaped friend, Jeff. The Cube Maestro. So starting here with the Black Lotus. That's pretty explosive, Jeff. Cracking the Lotus. Are we going to see if not Expector? An often troll for a Black Lotus. I like it. Oi, oi, oi! I love it, man. I like it. This is, this is style, style points for me, Jeff. You get style points. I, I, yeah, I mean, I like this. So passing turn here to Chris, who is finding another island. So he's under immediate pressure by the Ufton Troll. Remember, Jeff is already one game up, though. So I'm kind of hoping, Chris, to, you know, somehow win this one. That it's a 1-1, one, one, and we're going to see game number three. That's always very entertaining. There's a pass here. Let's see what Jeff can do. Attacking for two, I guess. Putting Chris on 18. There is a Mox Jet. There's an Underground C. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Setch Troll? Another Often Troll. Taking a little bit of risk. Opening himself up to a potential Bolt. So what Chris could do here is counter the Troll. And then in his next turn, play a Bolt. That would be ideal for him. He's playing a Bolt and Step here, taking care of the first Troll. If he has a second Troll, this is kind of a risky play by Chris. I do get it. He was hoping if I can push forward, I can deal four damage each turn. I can really put the pressure on Chris. But if Chris now has a second Bolt, there's a Tropical Island. Tapping three. Oh, a side blast, of course. He has those as well. We didn't see that in game number one, but here's the first side blast played by Chris. He does take two damage himself, but this is kind of the scenario, right? That that was a concern when Jeff took the risk by tapping out and playing a second set troll. That's the thing with these regeneration creatures. You do want to have the mana open to regenerate them, but that can be tough sometimes. And I again, I understand the risk that Jeff is taking here because if it would have worked, he could have swung in for four points of damage. And it would have really been a big, big problem for Chris. So Jeff finding a second red. That's pretty important. Three cards in hand. Doesn't play out a single creature, though. Passing turn. Maybe only having direct damage in hand. I wonder if you're Chris. Do you want to keep mana open for counter magic? Or do you want to play out a Tim? It looks like he's going to play out a Tim here. Tapping three. Yep, there is the Protocol Sorcerer. So playing out the Tim and passing the turn. Chris here finding another land, but just passing the turn. This is not too shabby for Chris. I wonder what cards Jeff has in hand. Maybe he has 
some direct damage, but doesn't want to use it on one Tim. There's the second Tim, though. This is risky again for... It's what Chris wants to do, right? He's playing eight or nine of these creatures, so he wants to play them out, but it's also a little bit of a risk because Jeff is playing Fireball, so now he can do, do a nice two-for-one. He could even wait one turn longer, see if there's going to be a third Tim. He is just passing the turn. And of course, the nice thing for Chris is what he's going for is at a certain point, he'll have so many Tims on board that as soon as Jeff plays out a creature, he can ping it to death instantly. And then, yeah, of course, Jeff can regenerate it, but that taps the creature as well. So, you know, it's 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 still annoying for, uh, for Jeff. It's kind of a way to tap a regeneration creature, you could say, with the Tims. So Chris finding a Taiga here. I wonder how many cards he has in hand. It's quite clear to see it from Jeff's side. He's got three cards in hand. I wonder how many cards Chris has. Probably also about the same. He was on the play, of course, so maybe he only has two cards in hand. Yeah, two cards in hand there for Chris. It looks like if we're looking in the corner there. And of course, Chris is like, well, you know what? Things are going pretty okay. I could just pass the turn. This is what a blue player wants to do. Just pass and ping on end step. So we see now three cards in hand still for, for Jeff. And of course, taking the double ping from Chris. So things are looking up here for Chris. He, you know, he probably has counter magic in hand as well. And maybe if you're Jeff, you're waiting just for the right moment. But I don't think he has a fireball. I think if he had it, he would have done it already. And yes, there's then the risk that you're going to run into a counterspell, but just let it be then, right? I really wonder what those three cards are. I mean, it could be a land in there that he's land flooded. That could be the case as well. So we've got Jeff. I mean, he's still on 17. He's not that low. Chris is actually lower. He's on 16. Another land, so it looks like he is finding tons and tons of land this turn. Tapping four. There's a Nevenerals disc. Okay, this is this is a good move. It can take care of those Tims. I'm expecting a counter spell from Chris or perhaps a steel artifact next turn. That would be quite spectacular. Remember, he had one steel artifact in the sideboard. So perhaps he boarded that in. There's a double ping first. So Jeff dropping to 17. There's the draw. So he didn't counter the Nevenerals disc. Another land. So Chris is also finding quite a lot of lands, by the way. He is playing with one Mahamoti. It would be sweet to see the Mahamoti Jin in action, which is actually a really good card in this matchup. Because Mahamoti can, of course, kill the hippie, and he doesn't have, Jeff doesn't have any other flyers, so it, it could really dominate the air. Tapping four. Are we going to see a steel artifact? No, we're not, I guess. He's tapping a lot more. Are we going to see a brain, guys? Are you going to see a fireball? Wow. That is aggressive stuff. So Jeff dropping to nine here with that huge fireball. This is bad news for Jeff. I think if, if you're Jeff, you probably would just want to use your disc main face right now because you don't want to give Chris the opportunity to untap the Tims one more extra time, take two extra points of damage. So here's the activation, of course, the ping for two. So Jeff's going to drop here to 7. He's also going to lose his Mox Jet, but I think this is a good move. And now he needs to play out another creature. Tapping 3. Okay, there we see a set Troll. So that is actually pretty good here for Jeff, playing that Setch. And passing turn. He's on 7. It's not too bad. And I believe that, yeah, the, uh, the player was just checking the list. Uh, Chris is only playing with one fireball. So that fireball is not out of the way. There we see a bolt. Probably going to be on Jeff's life total. Going to put him on four. Very aggressive play here by Chris. Does that mean he's got another bolt? Oh, he's got a side blast. Yep, there's the side blast. Are we going to see a red, el red elemental blast on the psionic blast? Ho, ho, ho. Chris was so close, but he didn't make it. Jeff really waited for that red elemental blast. Or are we going to see a blue elemental blast? No, we're going to see a, a soul ring instead. And Chris is out of cards in hand. Wow. So close to victory, yet so far away still. Jeff on four. 
And remember, Chris already has played out two side blasts, I believe, this, uh, this game. He's taking a hit here, going to go to 13. Can he find something? That is the big question. It looks like he can't. He's just passing the turn. Let's see what he can do. There's a bad lands from Jeff. Chris is now on 10 after that attack by the Setch Troll. Tapping, untapping again. Playing a soul ring of his own. Counting, that's never a good thing. If you play against an opponent with disintegrates and fireballs and you see him count his mana, you're like, no, I don't want that to happen. So there is the fireball. There's a the counter spell though. Oh, taking care of business. Chris only having one card in hand, but it was a counter spell. So he's still alive to fight another day, but things are still looking up for Jeff. You know, with that set troll. But the set troll is vulnerable now though. There we see a blue elemental blast destroying the set troll. Wow. This is a great moment for Chris, who's completely back in the game after countering that fireball and then destroying the set troll. So you could say both players had this moment in the game where they thought they would win, but a counter changed the entire scenario. So now both players are in top decking mode. This is pretty sweet. Jeff is the first one to go though, so he's gonna untap. He's got tons and tons of mana. If he can find a disintegrate or something, he's won the game. Okay, finding a troll, a creature is just good in this scenario as well. There's a often troll, a 2-2 creature, one red to regenerate. Oi, oi, oi. Maybe you're wondering why I'm saying oi, oi, oi all the time. Well, yeah, check the flavor text. Shout out to Ron. And uh, there's going to be a pass here. Chris uh, showing his hands like, okay, I've got nothing in hand. I need something good now. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough for Chris. It really is. I think I'm just, I'm, I think Chris needs his brain geyser. His brain geyser can, you know, can show him the way. If you can find a brain geyser, you can get back into this. I believe Chris's deck is underpowered, by the way, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it looks like he wants to tap some. Okay, there we go. Is this the Brain Geyser? I think it is the Brain Geyser. No, Mahamoti Jin. That's actually maybe even better than the Brain Geyser because Mahamoti Jin is such a powerhouse. It can block the, uh, the Setch Troll. And then he can actually kill Jeff next turn. Remember, Jeff is on four. No, does he have a Fireball or something? No. He does. Oh, he doesn't. Okay, Chris is winning this one. For a moment, I thought he wants to tap all his mana for a huge disintegrator fireball. But Chris won game number two. I'm excited because it means we get game number three. Looking forward to this. Game number three, the old deciding game. Who's going to win the unlimited 40 finals here? Is it going to be Jeff starting with the mountain, a.k.a. Mr. Munich? Or is it going to be Chris, a.k.a. Theodore? He is starting with a Volcanic Island and then also a pass. So both players having quite a relaxed first turns. There we see an Underground Sea. And I think that's in the advantage of Chris because Chris now has, if he plays an Island, let's see, yes, he plays an Island. He now has two blue open so he can start to counter things away. He only has three counter spells though. So it's not like he can do that indefinitely, but still he's a slight favorite. Uh, there's a tap here. There is the often troll. Oi, oi, oi. The 2-2 two, two creature, one red to regenerate. We know the drill by now. Is Chris going to counter the troll? Or, of course, going to bolt the troll? I, I like it, by the way, that Chris is, or Jeff, is, is constantly choosing to first play out his often troll. And after that play out his set, he's kind of forcing Chris to use his counter magic and removal first on the often troll, understanding that set, of course, is the better creature. There we see Chris tapping three for a protocol sorcerer. And then a pass turn. So that does mean that he cannot counter. But his main strategy, of course, is playing out those Tims and pinging on Jeff and then having that extra direct damage in his deck to, uh, to finish the job. There is a Setch Troll. 
But no land drop here from Jeff. That's quite interesting and unfortunate for him. Because if he would have found, for example, another mountain, he could have played out the Sedge, keep the Underground Sea untapped to regenerate the Sedge if Chris wanted to remove the creature with some direct damage. So I'm expecting Chris here, if he has it, of course, to play out a Bolt or a Psy Blast. Tapping three. Okay, I guess a Psy Blast. Okay, there's a Psy Blast on the Sedge. Chris taking two points of damage. He's going to drop to 18. He's probably going to pass the turn here back here to Jeff. So Jeff's going to untap. Can he find another land? Yes, he can. Okay, so now we can play out a creature and keep regeneration mana open. Tapping three mountains. Are we going to see exactly another Sedge? Because of the underground sea, it's a 3-3. Three, three, and he can regenerate it for one black. There's the ping, of course, by Chris. Dealing some points of damage. The first point of damage, actually. Jeff dropping to 19. Chris is on 18 after taking two damage from his own side Blast. There's a Taiga. Okay, so he's playing a little bit of green to uh, for his regrowth. He's got one regrowth in his deck. Going to do some tapping. Four. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, we see the control magic. So one control magic in the deck of Chris. I believe the card is restricted in this format. That's why he's only playing with one. And stealing the Setch. That's not too bad. Now the Setch is 2-2 two -two on the side of Chris because he doesn't have uh, a, a Swamp. I mean, I guess Chris could even consider playing with an Underground Sea in his deck. Just because it gives him, you know, it's still a blue card. There's no Blood Moon in this format. And if he then has a situation like this where he steals the Setch Troll, it, it is a 3-3. Three, three. I guess you see a lot of Setch Trolls in this format. It's, of course, one of the, the better creatures in the format. And Jeff, you're playing another Mountain. I mean, if he's got some direct damage, he could kill his own Sedge. But then it would be a nice two for one for Chris, of course. But I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do, right? Or does he have better options? Looks like he's going to tap all five. What is he going to do here? He's going to play an Earthquake for five. Ooh, that is brutal. So both players are going to take five points of damage. And then Chris can also ping Jeff. So Jeff's going to take six points. But Chris is going to lose all his creatures. So the set he just stole, he's going to lose. And he's going to lose, of course, his uh, Protocol Sorcerer. So Earthquake deals an X amount of damage to each player and each creature without flying. It's a very good card coming in from the sideboard here. Let's see, Chris is now on 14, and Jeff is also on 14. Okay, 14-14, fourteen, fourteen, and the deciding match of the finals, that's kind of nice. There he goes, tapping three, playing another Tim, and passing turn here. I mean, you know, if you're Chris, it's also kind of nice to know that the Earthquake is out of the deck. You know, that's one of those cards that you can get kind of like nervous about because you don't want to commit too much with your Tims on the board because you know Jeff has that Earthquake. On the other hand, your whole strategy is built on playing out all your Tims. So it's kind of double. Okay, he's going to crack the Lotus here. Interesting. Is he going to play an Hypnotic Spectre? Because he doesn't have to double black, of course. So using his Black Lotus to cast a Hypnotic Spectre. If Chris can find... He's got four cards in hand, I guess. If Chris can find another Tim, he can ping it next turn, but then he's first going to lose a card. Okay, there we see another Tim. Three cards in hand. It's not ideal for Chris, but at least next turn he can kill the Hippie. Then again, Jeff is playing with a lot of dark damage. If he can find, for example, a Fireball, that would be really, really bad news for Chris. Yeah, there's the pass turn. So it looked like Chris was a little bit in the tank there, trying to find a way out of it. Of course, he doesn't want to lose, he doesn't want to discard a card to the hippie, but I think there's nothing he can do. So there's the attack. Does he have a bolt in hand? Of course, bolt is an instant. He's got one red open. No, he does not. He's getting his cards ready. One, two, and three. 
Looks like Jeff's going to roll. There we go. So it's a six. So I guess it's that card. Yeah. That's a counter spell that's gone. That is pretty good. That is not too shabby. Two cards in hand for Chris. Also taking two damage, of course, going to drop to 12. I actually sometimes forget to take the damage from a Hypnotic Spectre because I'm so focused on, you know, that whole ritual with what card are you going to pick? What card am I going to lose? There's a Disintegrate on one of the Tims. Oh, this is a good move by Jeff. Also, remember, Chris just lost a counter spell. Does Chris have another one, though? He still has two cards in hand. No, he does not. He's going to lose to Tim. Oh, this is really bad news for Chris. And a great play by Jeff. You know, taking his time, first attacking with the hippie, then finding that counter spell that must have given him even more confidence to make this play. Oh, man. And now if you're Chris, if he doesn't have a second Tim, even if he does, he's still going to lose another card. So Chris really in the tank here, three cards in hand, trying to find a solution, wants to get rid of that Hypnotic Spectre ASAP. A Bolt would be so nice right now for Chris. But I don't think he has it. If he had it, he would have played a Bolt a long, a long time ago. He could have top-decked it, but even then I think it would have just slammed it on the table straight away. So we see a Bolt, a Psionic Blast, Control Magic, Tim, and a Counter Spell in the yard for Chris. And of course that one team is removed after that uh, disintegrate. So Chris really in the tank here trying to find a way out. Wants to get rid of course of that Hypnotic Spectre. But I think, you know, I think he just doesn't have a solution. And now he's got to choose, okay, what card do I want to play out? I hope for Chris that he's got another Tim, then at least with a little bit of luck next turn he can uh, he can kill the hippie. Tapping three blue here. Oh, there's a Psyblast. That's not too bad. I didn't expect him to have an answer like this. Because he took quite long, so I figured if you have like direct damage in hand, it's probably like a no-brainer, but maybe there's some other choices that he has to make before he could make this play. Anyway, he destroyed the Hypnotic Spectre, which I think is a really good decision. And Chris playing a regrowth here. Ooh, that's good. Is he going to take back? What is he going to get back? I, I would have maybe kept the regrowth in hand a little bit longer because I think Control Magic is one of the better cards. But now if he takes it, Jeff knows. Um, you know, Jeff knows what he has. Okay, so he's going to take back the counter spell. Interesting, because he cannot counter straight away. I, I personally would have waited with this regrowth, to be honest. But maybe that's just me. I mean, he's got a Tim. He can pass the turn. He's got two cards in hand. He's taking care of the, uh, of the hippie, which is the most important. But he stepped out right now, so... If Jeff can just, you know, play a set troll, then Chris doesn't really have an answer to that. So he's going to tap three here. Going to play an often troll. Okay, that's going to do the job as well. Another mountain, only one card in hand for Jeff. And there's going to be a pass, probably the ping here by Chris exactly. So Jeff's going to drop to 12. And he's going to untap. So two cards in hand, one of those cards being the counter spell that he just looked up with the regrowth. Finding an island, so still just two cards in hand now. Tapping three, what are we going to see? Okay, there's another Tim. 
So we know that his one card in hand is that counterspell. And I guess that's a pass now to Jeff, because what else could Chris do? So he's going to untap one card in hand for Jeff as well, but now he's going to go to two, of course, after the draw step. Jeff being on 12, Chris is on 10. Of course, there's the attack here. So I'm expecting Jeff here to put Chris on 8. So Chris is going to drop to 8, and now it's going to, going to be interesting to see what Chris can do in the upcoming turns. You know, is he going to keep pinging the off control for 2? There we see a bad land. So Jeff finding a lot of lands, which is good news for Chris. There's a ping for one, of course. So Chris is going to drop to 11. There's the pass. So exciting stuff here. It's, it's a very close match, actually. So we've got 8 against 11. Two cards in hand for Chris. One card in hand for Jeff. And he's passing the turn. So now I believe Chris is going to go, you know, pre-combat. He's going to ping. Oh, he's not. Interesting. He's taking the damage. That is interesting. Does that mean that he's got like a fireball in hand or something? He's going to ping Jeff for two. Jeff's going to drop to nine. Because just to clarify, a way to tap the off control would be to deal two damage to the off control before Jeff attacks. Then Jeff's probably going to regenerate it for one. If re you regenerate a creature, it taps itself. So it's, it's kind of a complex way to tap the off control. So I, I'm a little bit surprised that, that the Chris is not doing it. But of course, I don't know what cards he has in hand. There we see again the attack. Chris dropping to four. So you could ping Jeff back, put him on 7. Then if he has a Bolt and a Cyblast, he could kill Jeff. This is interesting. And also for Jeff, it's interesting because Jeff is playing with a lot of direct damage here. Chris only being at 4, so it's quite close to winning this. Looking at his hand again, 3 cards in hand. Of course, he knows that Chris has a counterspell that he looked up with that regrowth. So that makes it a little bit more complex here for Jeff. So he's going to tap the Underground C. Tap three in total. I'm going to play an Hypnotic Spectre. Are we going to see a counterspell for this hippie? I don't think we are because Chris can kill it. The nice thing here for Jeff is if Chris decides to kill the hippie, it, 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 he's not using that damage on Jeff, so that's also fine. What Jeff wants to do right now is buy some time or get lure Chris out to play his counterspell. I think that's what he's trying to do. Both of those things are fine. And I don't expect Chris here to counter the Hypnotic Spectre. Unless he's got multiple counterspells in hand, then it's a different story. Of course, he could consider countering it. And again, Jeff looking at his hand, Chris looking at his hand. So both players know that they're probably close to victory. But right now it's looking a little bit better for Jeff, though, because Chris is on four. And Chris is going to counter this. Wow, does that mean he's got multiple counter spells in hand? This is so interesting. Two cards in hand for Chris. I wonder what he has. I mean, he can ping Jeff for two. Going to put him on seven. Right. So he's going to put him on seven. Is Chris going to play a lightning bolt here? He's going to play a bolt on one of the Tims. Okay. 
Or is he going to play a bolt on Chris? Because, I mean, Chris is quite low. Exactly, going to play it on... No, it's going to play it on a Tim. That's so interesting. I wonder what that other card is in hand now with Jeff. He's going to draw... Three cards in hand here for Chris. So apparently he didn't have another counter spell. Or else I think he would have countered that, uh, that bolt. So Chris is four life. Jeff's on seven. Three cards in hand for Chris. There's the pass. It's looking really, really good for Chris here. Because now, sorry, for Jeff, because now Chris has to jump block with the Protocol Sorcerer. I'm expecting Jeff to attack here, of course. Gonna swing in for two. He's taking the damage. Gonna go down to two measly life. Does Jeff have a bolt or any other form of direct damage? Looking at his hand again, he's so close to winning here in the finals of Unlimited 40. And I mean, if you're Chris, you can... Ping Jeff to six. Then when it's your turn, you can ping him again to five, but then you still need two cards to finish him off, a side blast and a bolt. And Jeff really in the tank here. I think he's, he's doubting whether or not he wants to play out a direct damage card here on the life total of Chris. I think if you have it, I would just do it. Just see if Chris has an answer. Asking again, how many counter spells do you have in your yard? There are actually not that many in there, but remember Chris is only playing with three counter spells. What is he going to do? That's a big question. It looks like he's going to tap something. Ooh, he's tapping quite a lot. Are we going to see a big fireball keeping one Batlands open? There's a fireball. Is this it? Is this the end of the road here for, for Chris? And as Jeff just won the finals here of Unlimited 40, let's see if Chris has an answer. So the fireball is there. Can Chris counter it? No, he cannot. Oh. Oh, look at that. He had a side blast in hand. He was so close to victory. But Jeff is winning this with his fireball. So finishing it up in style. But also Chris just missed an extra Timmy turn, I guess, with that uh, psionic blast plan. But uh, congratulations to Jeff for winning this unlimited 40 finals. And uh, man, it was kind of a fun match, an exciting match to look at, especially in the end where I'm like, okay, what does he have? Why is he doing that? It's, uh, it's quite entertaining. Now, if you like this format, please check the description below for a link to their Discord. You can join for free. And then, um, yeah, you know, you can sign up for their tournaments or you can play some casual games. See if you like the format or if you don't. So check the description below. For now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. And before you go, I'd like you to ask you to take a moment to like, comment, and share this video on your socials. All these three things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward. And if you're new to Timmy Talks, welcome. I'm happy to see that you found the channel. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, there's one last thing I'd like to tell you and uh, talk to you about, I should say, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page because I have my own Patreon page on timmytalks.com 
Patre uh, sorry, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. <laughs> and uh, if you go over there, you can become a patron of the channel and support the channel financially as well. And it already starts with just $1 a month. I would really, really appreciate it because it helps me keep the channel afloat. So please check it out. There are some nice perks when you join the Timmy Talks program. One of those is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of each single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.